Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. And today I am using some new products from their fifth birthday release, super excited. So the Buffalo Plaid, the Farm Fresh Flowers, Stamps and Dyes, and then this because Stamps and Dyes is actually older product, but it totally suited my needs for this card. I was going through when I got the new um, release and immediately pulled out this Buffalo Plaid. I was like, yes, this is mine, you're for me. And so I knew I was gonna use it on my card. I figured it would match perfectly with um, these farm flowers with like the little milk pitcher. There's also, um, well, there's a pitcher, there's a vase, and then there's like a little milk canister. It's adorable. I opted to do it a little bit softer. Originally, I thought I was gonna do a black background, um, but I opted to go with this gray. This is, um, it's like a cool gray, charcoal gray. Um, the ink I'm using is W plus nine, but you can use whatever works for you. One thing to note, in larger backgrounds, now I'm telling you this because you're gonna see where my boo-boo is. See on that right-hand side where, yep, yep, I just pointed it out there. Um, it's because I had a air bubble in my background stamp. And this can happen with larger background stamps. You need to check for air bubbles before you start stamping. I did not, uh, and that's why I have that boo-boo there. Once I got rid of that one and you just peel up the stamp and put it back down to release the trapped air, I did not continue checking for more and I should have because there's another one. <laughs> um, so don't do as I do, do as I say. So that way you don't have the same problem. At the end of the day for me, because of the way that I designed the card, it wasn't gonna matter. So I just pushed through it. I did end up having to stamp this three times, but it's because it was the first time that I used the stamp. So it was not seasoned. Um, meaning it, I didn't do anything to the stamp. This is just straight out of the packaging. And so usually the first one or two times you stamp one, um, it is a little bit difficult to get a good impression. But uh, from here on out, it really shouldn't be an issue. I might maybe have to stamp it twice just to get even color. Large background stamps are hard to get an even background on just one, one go unless you're using um, pigment ink. So here you can see now I have two spots because I did not check for that second air bubble. Um, so yeah, just make sure you're doing that so that way you're not disappointed with your backgrounds. And that's not just this background, it's any background. Also, something to note, I think I fixed it after this little subsection, but you can see that this part of the video is darker. Pretty sure with all of the um, stay at home schooling that we've been doing up in the craft room that um, Peanut is playing with the camera when he should not be. So I think that's what happened there is he changed some of the settings. Like I said, I think I fixed it, um, but just so you're aware of why this is a little bit darker. I opted to do some no line coloring because I thought that that would be really pretty. And that is also why I changed the background to gray instead of black, since I wouldn't have any black outline there. Um, I used the fade out ink on three um, ink for my no line coloring. I did stamp them twice. I prefer stamping them twice and that's how I have found that this ink works best for me. Um, but uh, again, you guys know how I roll. You do you, whatever works for you. Um, and then this is the floral portion of the uh, Farm Fresh Flowers. I wanted to do the pitcher as like a metal pitcher, like a farm metal pitcher. I didn't do um, like any rust or anything on it, but that would be a really cool effect as well. We'll talk a little bit about the coloring. This is a very long video, uh, but don't worry, there's a very long story time to go with it. And um, this video is also part of a blog hop. Honeybee is, um, has a two-day celebration blog hop. They're doing giveaways. Um, I think it's a $25 uh, gift card. So make sure if you have not um, seen the hop, if you're watching on YouTube, that you head over to the blog. That way you don't miss your chance to win out on that um, $25 gift card because they really do have amazing products. Speaking of amazing, I have worked for Honeybee for years now and I am very, very fortunate that my card making quote unquote career has put me in a position where I don't have to work with anybody that I don't want to. Um, I don't have to, like I don't need to take it for the money or um, you know any of those things. I can, I can pick and choose who I want to work with. Um, and Honeybee is an exceptional company. They genuinely care about people. Melissa is the one who owns Honeybee Stamps. She is continually, the one set that she just created um, 
is going to Feeding America during this pandemic to help make sure that, that people are fed. She's done sets where she's donated to several different charities. She's a wonderful person to work with. Uh, Lisa is our design team coordinator um, amongst all the other hats that she wears. She is fabulous and I adore her and just the, the team in general is super supportive and I'm very, very blessed to be a part of that. So I'm so excited that they've hit their five year birthday. I can't wait to celebrate so many more birthdays with them. Um, and like I said, blog hop, make sure you want to check that out. Let's talk about the coloring um, before we get into story time, though, you know, we're going to go back and forth. You know that, right? Um, so I hear, like I said, I wanted to do it as metal. So I picked my cool um, gray Copics, the C's. And as far as coloring anything that is um, metal or to give it any sort of like shine, you don't want to over blend this. That's probably like key number one to getting, I guess, the the look, the striation of the metal. Um, you want to have those streaks. So you're going to be looking for super light pressure. Uh, when you're doing your flicking movements, your pen the t or the tip of the marker should barely be touching the, um, the surface of the paper. It should just be very, very light pressure. You don't want to be pushing down um, with a ton of pressure. You don't want to be going over the entirety of the surface. Like notice here, I did not color this in. I left it white. And then I'm just adding the, the um, flicks of color over top of it. Again, this is just to create that texture, that, um, you know, that metal look. There is another way to do this, which is a little bit smoother. And maybe we'll do that on a... Um, on a different card, but for this one to get that texture, this is what you want to do. You want those um, those flicking lines. And when you're right up on top of it, it's going to look a little bit crazy, um, but give yourself a little bit of time to look at it. Finish the whole thing, then stop and, and go back and look at it and see, um, or look at it from a distance. One of the other things, and you'll see that this is a learning process for me too, it always end that is that's why practicing is so important um i did not allow enough shadow in between these two sections so i am going to go back and make the top section a little bit darker just so you can tell that there's a, a clear separation you're not even going to see this portion in my finished card because my flowers will be on top of it but if you're a person who is just you're coloring this picture and you want to get some direction on that. I wanted to make sure I showed you the whole thing in case that is the part of the video that you are here for. Um, so I'm going to go back in and add some more of that C7 just so you can really tell that there are two different sections. For the lines, the thin stripes, those I am going to do more smooth. Um, so I'm just going to use a C1 and a C3 to separate those out. I did when I did the the middle section, I did not go all the way to a C7. I thought maybe I would make that section a little bit lighter um, and see how I liked it. I did not end up liking it. <laughs> um, but so when I, I just went back in with a C7 and it turned out fine. So give yourself a little bit of grace to kind of play around with it. I do struggle with no line coloring and keeping all of the sections um, separate. Like they get blobby for me. And so that's why I go section by section. There are some things I'm more comfortable with. Um, like in here, I'm looking at like a reference photo, um, which again is another tip. If you're not sure how to color something or how it should look, I just Googled um, like metal pictures. And that way I could look at them and see what um, it looks like in real life since I don't have a metal picture here I can look at I just googled them and I do that for a lot of images um but do section by section so that way you can always see where your lines are until you get more comfortable with no line coloring and then really your highlights and your shadows are going to be so so important for coloring with no lines um so that way there is that separation between this section and that section the other thing that I struggle with here, um, and you you can see it in the finished product, it, it is something that is still a struggle for me, something I need to practice, is creating clean edges. 
um, that is difficult for me. It might be hard to see on camera because like we're not right on top of it. But because the Copic markers, even with really light pressure, are bigger than, you know, a pen or um, a colored pencil, it is difficult for me to maintain really clean edges. So that's why you'll see sometimes um, when I'm doing it, I'm outlining it with a darker marker. I'm trying to give myself a buffer zone so that I don't go outside of those lines. That's why I'm so much more comfortable with black outline coloring. Um, because it does give me, it gives me that little bit of buffer and I know where to, you know, flick from. Um, so yeah, that's it. The, those are my, my tips on coloring the uh, metal pictures. I did like the C7 much better. Um, and now I'm going to go in and add that also to the handle. Um, so I added it to the thin portion up top on the left and then where it actually connects to the picture. Toward the end, I'm going to go back in and give those more of an outline as well um, so the parts that are super shiny don't look like they're just disappearing. All of these same tips I used with the florals you'll see when we're coloring there. Um, there's just one other one that um, one other tip I think for there and we'll talk about that when we get there. So if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook then you know that recently I had made an announcement about a very large change in my life. And some of you are super cute and sent me messages. I'm like, are you getting married? Is it this? Is it this? Um, and so I apologize that it's taking me so long to get this video out. But once I tell you the story, you'll totally understand why it's taking me so long to get this video out. So we have to start back at the beginning, which is um, I was working but Eric and I work for the same police department. I was doing, um, my actual title was case manager, but I was really just a clerk. Um, no, I shouldn't say just a clerk, like it's a less than, that's not what I mean. But that, that was my job. Case manager was something that they called the full-time employees, um, but the clerks is what they call the part-timers, and um, they're one and the same, pretty much doing the same job. The only difference is I probably did more for the detective bureau um, than the part-timers did and that's just because I was there full-time hours. So I took that job back in 2015. Um, here I wanted to kind of tone down the striations. I felt like it didn't look supernatural. Um, so I went in with just my C1 and went all over everything. This is the other tip that I have for you. So this is a very large um, bouquet of flowers and sometimes that can be really overwhelming and then add it in as a no line and forget about it. I'm already totally stressing about what goes where. When that happens, when I'm trying to color an image like this, I go in and I do what I call mapping. So I'm going in with my greens and I am mapping out where those leaves are so I can start to break up the picture in a way that is manageable for me. So that's what you're gonna see me doing here. I did use two different green combinations um, for the leaves here, but that is my other tip that I wanted to just give you, is if you're coloring something that has a lot going on, just right in the beginning, start mapping out some colors so that way it breaks it up and is more like bite-sized, so it's not super overwhelming. Okay, back to the story. So in 2015, um, well, it was actually 2014. I was a dispatcher for the same city that I um, had, that Eric and I worked for. And um, they decided they were going to regionalize, which basically meant they were going to combine a bunch of cities into one dispatch center. And I lost my job. We had to test for the new city to see if they would offer us jobs. I, and I think I've told you a portion of this. Um, so I did take the test there. Uh, I scored high and then they offered me the job, but they weren't telling us what they were giving us. When that happened, I also took a test for the State Highway Patrol as dispatch. Um, and I figured if I was going to try something new, um, I might as well just really try something new. And so I decided to not take the job at the Regional Dispatch Center. I decided to take the job at the state. So I went to the state, um, actually before we regionalized, and I worked there 
um, for probably about nine months. At the nine month mark, my old chief called me and said, hey, we're gonna keep two full-time positions here in the station for case management, will you come back? And so after talking to him, they were pretty much offering the same rate of pay as if there was no break in service. I would get to keep all of my vacation time. I wouldn't have to work holidays. Um, and I could go back to my people, you know, that I, I loved and was sad to leave. So I ended up taking that job. Uh, it gave me, you know, a more flexibility to spend time with Peanut as he was super young at the time. Um, I don't even think he was one yet. And, um, well, no, he had to have been one. So I went back and I took that job. I never loved that job. That job was, this is the best job for my family, so I will do this. I loved the people there. And so that's what, you know, basically made it manageable. But it was a true struggle for me because I did not feel helpful uh, like I did when I was a dispatcher and I could interact with residents in that way to, to offer them um, help and also with the officers. So I did that job and I was grateful for that job because I loved the people and because I loved my family. I always wanted to go back to dispatching. That was no secret. My chief um, now knew I, I, that I always wanted to go back. And um, over the last couple of months, um, I have interviewed at several places because I missed dispatching. I shouldn't say the last couple of months because when I first went back and took the job, I then went to that regional center where I turned down the job. I went back, I went there part-time and dispatched. Then that environment was not positive. So then I left there and I dispatched for my hometown city. Uh, my home city and um, I loved that. I loved them. Uh, but eventually their hours became something that I could not do because my ex-husband and I decided to get divorced. And with the divorce happening, I couldn't work night shift anymore. So I had to let that job go. Still missed dispatching. Then this new city um, had a, a regional center. They started at the same time as the other one. Um, they were hiring and so I interviewed there and they offered me a part-time position and I accepted that about four months ago. Um, then <laughs> there's another one for the county that was a supervisor position. I interviewed for that, I was offered that position and I ended up declining that position after talking to some people who worked there and some people who had worked with them that the hours was just, it wasn't going to be conducive to me being able to actively raise my child. Um, so Eric and I, when that job offer came through, Eric and I talked about it and we decided that it wasn't going to be the best option. So kept my regular job and this new part-time dispatching job. That's pretty much what I've been doing for the last four months. Also, while we're talking about jobs, I quit the college. I quit the college, not because I didn't love the teaching, I totally love the teaching, but because there's a lot of politics and nastiness um, in the administration and it just got to the point where it was more trouble than it was worth. When they have new management, I would love to go back and teach again. I just don't know if that's ever gonna be something I can do. So I'm down to two jobs, one part-time, one full-time. Then comes Corona, Corona 2020. And we already knew that the city that my full-time job was for um, did not have a lot of money. It's also the city Eric is employed for and we are not union. So we're at will employees. So first things first, they say there's no overtime. They cut all of the overtime. The following week, they came back with um, there's no extra hours for the part-timers and there is, they cut down the full-timers, which was me and my partner, down to 35 hours a week um, from the 40. So that's um, quite a bit of money a month for me. Then the following week, they laid off the part-timers. So at this point, this is a Tuesday, um, not last week, but the week before. And our chief had to fight to keep the full-timers. So here I am on Tuesday. I'm terrified that I'm not going to have a job at all. Um, 
that they're just going to lay all of us off, which at least then I would get unemployment, but I was more concerned they would furlough us um, or, you know, cut our hours down to 20 hours a week. So now I can't collect unemployment, but I also, you know, can't pay my bills. So it was all of the stress. I was worried. Um, they also, at that time, um, that they changed it, that they laid off all the part-timers, they changed our hours um, to Monday through Friday, which means I couldn't work weekends. Well, the child care situation, <laughs> we were only able to make it work because I had off days that were opposite of my ex-husband. So, and then Eric watched him during the day. So, I mean, Eric went from seeing him maybe three times a week because he works afternoon shift and Nathan would usually be in bed by the time he got home um, to now Eric is pretty much his primary caregiver. Um, he's with him well over 40 hours a week. But we were only able to make the schedule work because my ex-husband was off on Saturday, Sundays. I was off on Thursday, Fridays. And so really we just had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to worry about. Going back to the card. Um, so I did the tulips here. There is like a hyacinth um, in the background. And I love that. But trying to stick to all of those little tiny... Uh, circles with no line coloring was impossible. So what I did was I opted to just do stippling in several different um, blue-violet colors so that it would give the appearance of that same flower without me having to color in every little single one of them. So that's a tip for that as well. Um, so anyway, we were only able to make that work because of the staggered days off. Well, now they changed it to Monday through Friday. So here I am on Tuesday. I'm worried they're going to lay me off the next week. Um, I'm worried that I'm going to have to take FMLA, which is um, the Family Medical Leave Act, in order to be able to do my child care. I'm pretty much terrified that, um, that that's not going to work out. And you know, things are funny. God is funny. So that was Wednesday or Tuesday. Wednesday, I had a part-time shift at... Uh, the regional dispatch center where I had a part-time job at. I go into work. Um, I'm there for maybe an hour. The Our supervisor calls me into the office and he's like, hey, we're hiring full-time and we want to offer you the, the, the spot. And I was like, I would love to take the job, but here's my problem. I don't have childcare and I can't work 12 hours. Um, and he's like, yeah, I know. I remember you telling me that. So here's what we're offering. What time does Eric have to go to work? I said he has to go to work at 3. And they're like, okay, so you can either do the 12-hour shifts and come in at 2 a.m. and be done at 2 p.m. Or you can work 8s. And then you can work 8s while you're in training, which is, would be, you know, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that way you're home and you always have child care. And that's amazing that they would even make that offer because governments, union jobs, I mean... They're, they're usually very unbending. I told him, I said, I that's I genuinely appreciate you making the offer. Like, I don't want to be the new girl who's coming in super entitled and asking you, you know, to bend the rules for me. And they're like, we're not, you know, you're not asking, we're offering. Uh, we think you're a really good fit here. And we would love to give you the, you know, the first spot. We're hiring four people. That way you're, you know, have the highest seniority. And, um, so I was like, okay, but I've been dispatching for 16 years. I'm not going to take as long to train as somebody else. So what, like I'm in training for two weeks and then I'm back to the, I don't have childcare problem. And they're like, well, your seniority is decided by your hire date, not the date you come out of training. So we would just agree to keep you in training until this whole thing resolves itself and you have childcare. Summer camps open back up, school opens back up, you know, whatever it is. Which, I mean, is such a blessing. Like, I cannot, I cannot even tell you the relief, um, just the, the sheer relief of knowing that, like, I'm, it's a good city, they're financially stable, um, the people there are super nice, obviously they're willing to, to work with me. So, um, he, here's the catch though. The catch is that you have, in order to have the most seniority, you have to have the first hire date and they like to start pay people at the first pay period. And I'm like, okay, so when's the first pay period? And he's like, Sunday. Now this is Wednesday. And I was like, well, I can't just leave without giving two weeks. And he's like, I totally respect that. Right now you're working four hours for us and eight hours for them. Could we flip flop it? where you work eight hours here and then work four for them and maybe take four hours of vacation time or something. And I was like, 
possibly. That's a great idea. So I leave there. I go to my full-time job and um, I call, my chief is not there. I call him. I tell him this is my situation and he is so immensely supportive, <laughs> which just goes to show you that like a lot, you know, those being my people, those are my people for a reason. He's like, you know, I think it's a good move for you. You've never been shy about saying that you wanted to go back to um, dispatch and we'd love to keep you part time. Once all of this is over, we'll talk about, you know, you coming back here part time. Um, you know, we're just on pause. And um, he's like, let me call the because we had one of the one of our part timers, his name was Dave, um, had always said that he would take the full time job if I ever decided to leave. And so he's like, let me see if they'll let me hire Dave. So he calls the mayor, the mayor says, yes, we'll let you hire Dave. So in a matter of two days, um, basically I quit my job that I had for 16 years and Dave went from being laid off to having a full-time job. So it really did work out amazing. And then I was worried that I didn't have a start date at uh, the regional center. So I was scared to death that I was gonna have to go all this time without a paycheck. Um, but then they ended up starting me that Monday. So really I just had like two days off in a week like I normally would. I was off Saturday, Sunday, and then I started the new job on Monday. So um, yeah, it's just been a huge, huge blessing um, for us. And then like, obviously, cause Eric still works there. Um, so like I still hear about what's happening at work. You know, the, the following week, the, the people, um, my position is still there, like, Dave and Kathy still have jobs, um, but they laid off several other people. They laid off several people from City Hall, several people from maintenance, um, and so I like I know it's it, it would it's just a matter of time, and I'm so grateful that I still have a job. So isn't that funny how things work out? Like good looking out, Lord, thank you. Um, back to the card, all the coloring's done. Here, like, I am running low. I don't know about you guys. Like, I'm a hoarder when it comes to craft supplies, no doubt. But the one thing I am running low on is black cardstock. And so I die cut my because out of it. And now I am trying to use that little teeny tiny space in between for my um, little label banner. And it did work. Um, but you'll see as, like, the videos progress uh, here, the creative ways I'm going to have to come up with to try and stretch my black cardstock because I do not have a ton um, just lying in wait and not everybody is shipping right now. So, um, yeah, Honeybee still is though, by the way. Um, so here I'm just doing the usual, uh, I treated it with my anti-static tool, stamped in Versamark, uh, white embossing powder, cleaned up any extra embossing powder with my paintbrush, and then heat set it. Here's my putting together of the card. I have a problem with patterns. I love patterns, I think they're beautiful, but I don't like a lot of pattern, just a little pattern. So here I'm giving myself this um, white piece of cardstock so that the pattern is still there in the background, but it's not this, you know, beautiful bouquet that has a lot going on on top of a pattern uh, paper that has a lot going on. So that's why I gave myself the buffer. I tried it without it. I did not personally love it, but it didn't look terrible. So if you are somebody who likes um, less clean and simple, that may be an option for you as well. I would just encourage you to kind of try it out. Here I die cut the because out of black and then it's shadow, which is also included in that um, die set, um, out of white. And then I glued those down together. I am going to pop up my um, pitcher and my flowers on foam tape as well as my sentiments um, once I figure out how to make it lay how I want it to lay. So yeah, that's pretty much, basically that's why it's taken me so long to get this video up is because, um, well, any videos done, is because I went from working afternoon shift and day shift um, with lots of time off, honestly, because I had to be at home to watch, you know, to, to be with Peanut on the days that Eric had to go to work. Um, so really, like, just kind of jumped right in it with this brand new schedule. And I had told Peanut a long time ago, it was one of the things that we had talked about um, with card making. He felt like um, I maybe spent a little bit too much time in my craft room 
And what he didn't understand was before, like, I needed it. Um, now our situation is a little bit different. Um, but so we have come to an agreement that mommy doesn't do card making or editing or any of those things. Um, when I have the, when he's awake, basically. So I wait until he goes to bed and then I knock out all the things I need to knock out if I'm not too tired. And that's pretty much what happened this week is I was just too tired. Um, getting up at five o'clock in the morning, five days in a row is so new for me. <laughs> um, and I realized that it's not new, you know, that's not a difficult thing for, for most people, but I am a night owl by nature. I do not love day shift. Days are too early for this girl. Um, but be I am super grateful, you know, that I have a job. So it is, it is what it is, making it work over here. And then um, Eric still being a rock star, he, we found this, basically we're ships passing in the night. So he gets up with Peanut in the morning. I'm already at work. Oh, here on the because. Um, I'm balancing it. I'm, I, they're going to be the same level. So I'm adding foam tape on the left and the right hand side. And then I'll just glue it in the center over that uh that metal picture um but eric is he's amazing um so if like ever there was any doubt which there wasn't but if there was about like picking a partner in life uh he has totally just stepped up um and been super supportive and done all the things that i don't have time to do <laughs> um so he's he's with Peanut during the day. I leave work uh, at two. I come home. We pretty much just kiss each other goodbye in the garage. He goes off to work. I come in, um, you know, do the dinner, the bath time, the, the putting to bed, all of that. By the time that is done, I pretty much have maybe a half an hour to an hour um, by myself. And I just have not had the energy to do any sort of card making. So I have a couple of days off. I'm hoping to knock out a bunch of card making while I have um, some time off. That way I can edit those and kind of get them up sporadically now that I have more of a game plan. Um, but so we will see how that goes. Um, but pretty much on a whole, it's a it's a total win. Very, very grateful for my situation. So after all that is done, I am going to still put glitter on my flowers. This is just a um, clear glitter pen. And then that's it. That's the whole card. So thank you guys if you made it this far. Thanks for sticking with me and listening to all of story time. Um, and then again, head over to the blog hop so you don't miss your chance to win. I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.